Welcome, salutations. I go by the name of Tay Chaplin, content creator, AV God, Social Supreme. This is ARTV, and you are watching Bands with Tay. I'm gonna tell you something. Drake album came out. Yep. And we're going to talk about Drake's album for the whole of the episode. <laughs> Scorpion. So Drake just dropped another album and it's called Scorpion. Um, this album is very interesting because it came right after the haymaker that Pusha T landed on him. And also after the discovery that he has a baby called Adonis. And we're going to be talking about all that shit right now on Bands with Take. Okay, so first of all, let's just go into some subliminals. Cause Drake is the subliminal guy, right? That cannot speak straight. Now, first of all, I would just like to say that Pusha T helped Drake sell records. Because apart from the fact that everyone was looking forward to Drake dropping an album, everyone was looking forward to Drake responding to Pusha T. Mm -hmm. Which he did not, by the way. He did not. Now, um, another thing is that we know that the best Drake is a hurt Drake. When Drake is hurt, he come with them songs. This particular time, you know Jig, you know Connect, you know make sense like that. Apparently, my bed is the name of Drake's son. Drake's son's full name is Adonis Mabed Graham. First of all, I don't know why the fuck I know this because I don't even know your full name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but also, um, sneaky Drake. I see what you're doing. Throughout the whole album, you know, Drake was talking about, talked about The weekend. he talked about Kanye, he talked about leaving cash money, and also, he just talked about being depressed. Um, but the thing about this album is that it's one of those things where you know when someone just got beat up in front of the whole school and before he was like the coolest kid and now he's trying to come back to school and just like, mm. still like, so I get up. Nah. It's not working. working, Drake. Um, so I'm going to go step by step and kind of tell you what I think about these songs. Um, if I was going to rate Drake's albums, first of all, it would go like this. It would go, take care, so far gone, I'll throw that in there. Um, nothing was the same. Thank me later. If you're reading this, Scorpion, really? Views and the last is more life. That's, that's the album. I feel like that's like his least creative album. Let's go through the album. Let's look at some of the, the best songs. Now, first of all, the first track, Survival, Fire. Drake is just coming strong out the gate. He's talking about how he has to survive regardless after everything that has happened. And, you know, it's just Drake being Drake. You know, on any Drake album, right? The first song, he's just like, oh, you know, I was talking to my mama the other day at 3.45 and then Sandra called me and told me that she's working at Hooters. I should come pick her up. I told her no. And I was feeling sad about it. Oh, that's, that's like, the, that's the Drake song, right? That's what Survivor basically is. Non-stop is... Mm. Listen, if you like to pump, right? If you, that's, that's what the song is for. Yeah, Elevate is kind of trash for me. Um, emotionless is, is an attempt at Drake to kind of like speak about, this is the song where he mentions his son and he was like, I wasn't trying to hide my kid from the world. I was trying to hide the world from my kid, you know, um, which is a dope line, but no. <laughs> Why? Um, because it's like, we didn't know about it until Pusha T told us about it. And the problem is, Pusha T said this, he was like, the only reason you're waiting to drop your album and announce your son is because then you were going to go forward and then speak about your deal with Adidas. Mm -hmm. That was, that's named after your son. You know, so it was kind of like in a press release type of way. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, compl I actually completely understand to this point because the internet is a very ferocious place and I don't know why you would want to put your, child your child out there that is not even one year old yet, you know, to have that kind of energy. So, Emotionless is a hard track, by the way. Very, very hard track. I think it's produced by 40. Um, then there's God's Plan, y'all know that. I'm upset, ugh, trash. Um, eight out of 10 is so fucking hard. It's so hard. Check this out. 
Too rich for who y'all just got rich, rich again. Who grips the mic and likes to kill their friends? Yeah. Can I say the production on this album is top notch? Mob ties, it's okay. It's one of them turn up songs that you know you're gonna be drinking and tequila and sambuca with and lose yourself. Is there more? This track. I feel should have been the first track on the album. And I'll tell you why. Because is there more, he basically is saying that like, look, is there more to life than having like a fat bank account? Like it's really reflective of like his state of where he is, right? It's a two-sided album, right? Side A is more hip hop and side B is more R&B. I know all Drake fans have been praying that Drake would eventually do this one day. Give us like one, hardcore hip-hop album and then give us like the r&b but he did not i'll tell you why it's like he's injured right and he's not at full strength you know so a lot of the tracks that would have you know had traction are not necessarily coming through there's nice for what you all know what nice for what is um next track um that's finesse and that's like that's a good track yeah apparently he's talking about rihanna on this he sounds so depressed. <laughs> like he doesn't even he doesn't sound motivated. I like the chorus. When, when it hits the chorus, you're like, ah, okay, Drake, Drake. See a little goosebumps in my arm. Like, I like it. Um, so that song is good. Ratchet Happy Birthday is super trash. This song sounds like a song you would play on your birthday when no one came. Like I don't Anyway, listen. Next track is That's How You Feel. That's all right. Blue Tent is lit. So in my feelings, typical Drake. Cool. Um, don't mind to me. That Michael Jackson track. Come on. You know you should have just gotten Abel to do it. But apparently him and Abel have problems again. I don't know what that's about. I thought they were making like a new, they were going to do the OVO EXO album. To be honest, this um, OVO Fest this year in October is going to be very interesting because I don't know how it's going to be. But I think Drake has something up his sleeve. Let's let's see what he works on. Um, this After Dark, which is great. Um, it features Static Major and Ty Dolla Sign. And listen, Ty Dolla Sign has been on a fucking roll. To me, Ty Dolla Sign is like the new hookmaster for like anything, you know. He's like, Ty Dolla Sign and Nate Dogg are like, here, you know, rest in peace to Nate Dogg, you know, of course, no disrespect. My favorite song is actually Final Fantasy. Hmm. Let me tell you why I like this track. It's because we all know that Drake is a freak now. We all know he likes nasty stuff. And like, this track is just, it embodies that and it's very forward. And the beat is fire, you know, but then unfortunately it has only one verse on this. And then he goes into like some like, Next, album. yeah, next R and B. Oh, 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 and that's basically the album. The last track on the album is March Fourteenth, where he talks about being with his baby moms twice and actually being with her just one time. He's met her twice, and the second time he met her, that's when he met his son, and he's met his son only once. He has a line on the album where he says, "I have an empty crib in my empty crib." Wow. Yeah, it's just. That's that's the problem. That's the problem with the album. It's like, it's actually a good album, you know, but it's just like a lot of the emotions. Like, I feel like Drake made seven out of 10 music, but then because of his persona, it always boosted like 8.5 and nine because of his persona. But now, you know, like he's not as nice as, you know, people might've thought he was. So the music is not really connecting as much. So um, if I was going to rate this album, I would give it, 5.5 bullets out of nine and this is uh, going to be just fairly ripe with no palm oil sauce and granites no fish that's the album to be honest if he decided to make 10 tracks it would have been just fine if he decided to make like eight tracks 12 tracks it would be just fine but he made 25 tracks and the thing about it is like when you make 25 tracks on the on one side um i think i liked about six tracks on the, on the other side i liked about three tracks so that's nine from me you know so it may vary from other people but personally i feel like the album is definitely not his best but it's not his worst um i definitely feel like this is one of the albums where 
he definitely tried to write a lot more he tried to be a lot more hands-on with it but unfortunately he was just handicapped with the whole push t situation because it really did affect you know the impact of this album so yeah that's my rating There's a segment that we do on this show, it's called Playlist 4. And in this segment, we basically curate music for any vibe, mood, particular situation. Today, I'm basically just going to run down four of my favorite tracks off the album that you can vibe to in your car. Let's talk about it. So, um, obviously, I'm going to have to put God's Plan in there. Because if you're driving down the road, you know, and you have a girl in your car, or you're just trying to feel good, God's Plan is a banger. Number one hits, say no more, right? I hold back sometimes I won't. Yeah. I feel good sometimes I don't. Hey, no. I finesse down Western Road. Hey, yes. Next track I'm going to throw in there is Nonstop. Now, Nonstop, the bass in this song is deafening. So, yeah, use your caution. Never stop. This the flow that got the block hot. Shit got super hot. Hey, give me my respect. Number three, I would go for Final Fantasy, which it sounds like a 90s, like early 2000s type like vibe. So that's three. And for the fourth one, I will substitute Blue Tint and Finesse, depending on how I'm feeling. Look who I'm fucking again. I had on ice for day. I watch the ice get there, now that she sink or swim. So those are my four tracks, if you're riding in a car. So yeah, that's my playlist for Drake is one of my favorite artists. I will never doubt his pen. I will never doubt his craftsmanship or his creativity. Unfortunately, on this album, it was the first chink in his armor. And what I'm realizing is that this is a good opportunity for him to go for a second wind, right? Because he's been on top for so long. I think it's about 10 years. You know, Drake has been on top for about 10 years, if you think about it. Um, so this is a great time, opportunity for him to like, go away, go revitalize. You remember when Jay-Z went away and came back with like, Dread Afros? You can do that. Don't, don't do Dread Afros. But, you know, just like, go find yourself, come back. And I really feel like he needs to work closer with 40. If, if Drake can give us So Far Gone 2, that would be his magnus opus. That would be the best thing that he, he would ever be able to do. And that is my verdict, guys. Um, go have a listen to Drake's Scorpion. It's on Apple Music, Tidal. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, feedback, comments below, you can hit us up on Aristocrat TV on Instagram and also on YouTube. Have any comments, feedback, hit us up down below. I go by the name of Tate Chaplin, and this has been Banzo Tate. I'll see you guys next week. Say that.